If all the flowers and leaves and green things and birds and wild creatures danced past at once, what a crowd it would be! I'm sure they'd dance and sing and flute and that would be the wafts of music. Have you ever read my novel, Secret Garden? Do you notice the magic in Mary's description? As we all know, the flowers, leaves, birds and wild creatures cannot dance, sing or flute. However, I bring them to life. In Mary's eyes, these animals and nature can behave like human beings. This is a literary technique called personification. It's when non-human objects or phenomena are given human characteristics and sensibilities. Personification is used in literature to add more meaning beyond the literal and to enhance aesthetic and literary appeal. Now that you know that personification is to give a human quality or a characteristic to a non-human thing, let me tell you about another magic literary device, zoomorphism, which gives animal-like qualities to humans, gods, and inanimate objects. I use zoomorphism a lot in my young adult fantasy novel, The Golden Compass. I often ascribe animal characteristics to humans. For example, when I describe the character Lord Asriel, I say, all his movements were large and perfectly balanced, like those of a wild animal. And when he appeared in a room like this, he seemed a wild animal held in a cage too small for it. Lord Asriel's movements are described like those of a wild animal, and indeed his character is well represented by a wild animal in a cage. The technique of zoomorphism makes him sound more tough and more formidable to contend with. Thank you, Mr. Pullman, for your detailed explanation. Today, we have introduced the devices of personification and zoomorphism to you. They appear similar, but are in fact different. Both figurative devices can make the text more vivid and compelling. <laughs>